I started running 29 years ago. My running and meditation have always gone together. Meditation is such a natural thing. Everybody has meditated before. If you think of when you were at the ocean and the sun was rising, or you were in the woods and it was all green and sort of misty and peaceful, that's meditation. I tried to go into my heart and I tried to not focus on my mind's thoughts and so forth, but just focus on joy and beautiful qualities that I want to bring forward in myself and positive things. When you get to the point where you can focus your mind and really just concentrate, then meditation is like an expansion, it's like an opening. To many people, a marathon seems like a very long distance. A lot of people who run know about 100 mile races, but sure, 3,100 miles seems, seems definitely like a big stretch. I've been running two longer runs a week at least two hours or more. And the other days I've been running more like 45 minutes. A lot of the training with really long mileage was like training for the mind, to get away from the fear of distance. I need to gain some weight before the race. I have a little over a month and I need to gain about seven pounds. I always try to start a little heavier because you lose a lot of weight during the race. Sri Chinmoy gave me the name for the store. When I first opened it, I just came up with my own name to start. We called it Visions of Beauty. Sri Chinmoy came by my shop and gave us that name. And we're always trying to live up to it because it's a big name. Transcendence, Perfection, Bliss of the Beyond. <laughs> For me, it's become like a spiritual journey when I run the race. There's always different inner challenges. Meditation is kind of a combination of inner and outer running. It's so much a part of you, it's like your life.
We're the sponsors of the Self Transcendence 3100 mile road race, which is the longest certified road race, I guess, race in the world. I'd like to thank. This year will be special in a way because Sri Chinmoy will no longer be visiting us and so forth because he passed away in October. Sri Chinmoy really loved the 3100 mile race. He would always find time to visit the race and say hello to the runners. Open, he'd drive by in his own small, cute little car that he had. And, constantly cheering the runners on. This is our 12th year and the race will go on as long as I'm race director and hopefully it will continue after that. I think it will be a matter of kind of going a little deeper inside in our meditation and kind of feeling his, his blessings inwardly. I really feel that his spirit will be there. And now I'd like to introduce Schuferger of Beckford, our only female competitor from Washington, D.C. for USA. Schuferger is the only 11-time finisher and still the only female competitor. To date, she has ran 36,801 miles around the 3,100-mile race course after totaling the 3,100 miles and the original 2,700 miles. Now that's pretty good running. Well, I feel very happy to be able to start the race on Sunday. I feel very grateful that my body is cooperating. I definitely know what I'm in for, <laughs> you know, having done it so many times. But, um, yeah. I do, I guess I do have some confidence. I mean, it's more for me like I, I have faith somehow that, um, that God's grace will carry me through. Because it's always, always worked out that way before. Why would anyone do this? Why would someone come out here? Why would you come out here for two months, spend all this money, take your time off, suffer, and then get no, no one, maybe a pat on the back and a trophy if you even finish? I mean, why would anyone do that? We have 14 runners in this year's event. I don't get there and think, oh my God, I have to run 60 miles today, because it just seems overwhelming. But if you just keep moving, it just happens. <laughs> Ever since Sri Chinmoy turned 47, we've had a 47-mile race in August at the time of his birthday. So for years I would do that race. At one point, he started weightlifting. Within eight months, he did 200 pounds with one arm. For people who know about weightlifting, apparently this is really incredible. We were inspired, some of us on our marathon team, to have a 200-mile race to celebrate his 200-pound lift. I had a really powerful experience. I enjoyed it a lot. Every 20 miles that I completed, I chanted gratitude 20 times. And actually, I came in second overall. 
At one point, Sri Chinmoy wanted to increase the distance, so he added a race that was 2,700 miles. 27 was a special number for Sri Chinmoy. He was born on August 27. At the end of that race, he said, next year the race will be 400 miles longer. 3,100, Sri Chinmoy was born in 1931. 56 Pekka, 56 Pranjo, 54 Anandalahari. That's how they break up the day by laps. We give the conversion there with the miles. They always think in laps. They count your laps and they add your mileage onto the scoreboard. Your mileage just keeps growing on the board. I started meditating with the Sri Chinmoy Center 29 years ago. What really spoke to me were his paintings. They're very spontaneous and childlike and full of light and beauty. I was studying art at the time in college, so that was kind of my language, so I really could relate to the paintings. I wasn't consciously looking for something specifically, and then I took a course on Eastern philosophy, and that was it. And then when I read about it, I said, wow, this makes sense. You know, coming from a real strict Catholic background, it's like you're shopping for something. You can spend your money foolishly, or you can be careful and see if it's the right purchase, that you're doing the right thing. And in the spiritual life, you know you're doing the right thing when you get a happiness. We live a very disciplined spiritual life, very disciplined, but that doesn't mean that you have to live in a cave. When Sri Chimoy sees some, someone or he sees a student, he's one of his students, he doesn't see like you see, he looks in and he sees all their good qualities and what their capacities are. He's not saying, this is what I'm telling you are. He sees that's who you are, so the name only reflects who you are. The full meaning is the brilliance, radiance, effulgence, and perfection satisfaction of the soul beauty always to please the beloved in his own way. Sri Chimoy really emphasized that each person on earth has a beautiful soul. I feel so lucky to know the meaning of my soul's qualities. My parents were always looking at me like, she seems different, but she seems happy. And my father was like, oh, where's my daughter gone? She's got a different name, and what's going on? But something changed. He said to me the last months of his life, I just want you to know, when you became Sri Chimoy's student, and um, he gave you that name, I struggled with it. But I want you to know now that you're Dipali to me. And I think what entered into me entered into them. They saw I was peaceful, I was in my heart, I was satisfied. Now I'd found my home. In this particular race, she has a team of, of handlers. Um, there are um, seven different girls who um, take turns each day of the week to come and bring her to the race in the morning. She has different handlers during the day. She has three different handlers who take shifts. close actually, she's kind of, how can I put it, she's, it's like she's family actually. I wouldn't say like a mother figure, more like my sister. I take care of her each time she comes around, I make sure she's had enough to eat. They have to eat 10,000 calories a day, which is huge. They keep bringing food all day basically, which is good because we need to keep eating. Most people stop and walk with little cups. If you eat a whole meal at once, then it's difficult to keep moving again. Whereas if you eat a little bit at a time, you can keep moving. 
What we do is charge the runners, but we can't charge them what it costs because they couldn't afford it. So we tell them if you can't collect more, then that's fine. But if you can collect from your friends in that additional amount, that will help. And that's how we do it. We do fundraisers. Our marathon in August pays for a lot of it because that's one of the reasons we do it. This is a very expensive race. Part of my uh, duty is to escort Schupaber around the course. The 12 years of the 3100, after it gets dark, I go around with her on the bicycle. I'm one of the race directors, and this is my evening shift. We always have two race directors on in the evening. It's definitely much safer than it used to be. A couple of years, Sri Chinmoy asked me to keep track of my laps. I think the most I ever did was 785 miles one year. Boredom is not a question. Same with the runners, you know, they don't get bored. It wouldn't work if you, <laughs> I don't think you could do it if you got bored or allowed yourself to get bored. At the moment it's really hot, um, 90 degrees, and um, we're putting every few laps she has some ice under her head. The important thing is a good sunblock. One of our top runners was negligent in putting sunblock on and that was it. They suffered for days even though it was overcast. I usually rest for five minutes and then I take care of my toes. I only have one toe that's really in kind of bad shape. It's longer than the other toes, so it just gets mashed. Very sad. This is the worst surface to run on in the world, is concrete. The worst surface. Your foot gets wider and longer. Literally flattens out. At the end of the race, you'll have two sizes bigger. Well, here's his shoes. Because we've got so many pairs here, we have markings. Um, if you look closely, these have got Pine trees, different symbols, smiley faces. They cut them. Like here. And um, they take away this because it just rubs on the feet. A lot of the runners cut out their toes. You try to change your shoes, you change your gait, you change your socks, you do all these different things, but if you get a blister, what are you going to do? You got to live with it, you got to treat it. Usually what happens is you just end up running right through it. You just, ouch, ouch. You'll see him sitting here with the shoe off, picking the bottom of their feet with a... <laughs> this looks like something from a hospital, but actually most of these toes are doing fine. But I'm doing that because in the rain, there was peeling and, you know, they got more sensitive. They just weighed us today and now my weight is very low. I still feel pretty strong, but I, I have to work, really work on um, somehow getting my, some weight back. How so, much weight have you lost? I've lost uh, like 12 pounds, even maybe 13. If you're one of the skinnier runners and you start losing weight, how do you stop it? You know, and you gotta, you know, you, and you, you know, they, sometimes you just drink the heavy cream in the in the dessert, but you have to get you have to get calories. Do you have a feeling of the end being in sight? Uh, not thinking? quite yet, but, but I'm definitely ahead of last year by a little more than a day. Uh -huh. So that's encouraging. Tin Moy has written many, many beautiful things about self-transcendence. He wrote, self-transcendence is man's conscious awareness of perfection. When you put self-transcendence into action, it's really going beyond what we feel our capacities are. Today I run one mile, and tomorrow I run two miles. When I accomplish two miles, I get a lot of satisfaction from that. Our races are all called the self-transcendence race because say today you do 60 miles. Well, the next day, is, that's your starting point. Okay, then the next day, that's just, and it goes on and on and on. 
That's the essence of self-transcendence, is just going beyond what we previously have done. You really feel a connection with everyone who's involved. It is like a family, like the ultra family. A number of years ago, Sri Chinmoy gave me beautiful advice. He said, just imagine that you're five or six or seven years old. You're a child and you're running for the joy of it. And just imagine it's kind of like a game. And it's so true because if you examine the details of the race, you know, you're running on a sidewalk and there's cars going by. People are taking your laps down. You have all these laps. and time and so many hours in the day and so forth. But if you focus just on those details, really it takes all the joy out of it. Whereas if you focus on just what you really love, which is the running and the movement and the enthusiasm of getting out every day and, and accomplishing, that gives you everything you need, really. Kind of a supply of sweetness and joy that really propel you. average 54.634 miles per day. The women's champion, 12-time finisher, 
and the greatest female super long distance runner in history, Super Vogue Vectroy. Yeah. Shubaba has tremendous inner strength. People get so much inspiration from it. And they see somebody like Shubaba, who's so slight, doing this. They get inspiration, well, maybe I can do something. I now proudly enjoy God's compassion I really find her extremely inspiring, and I always will. Who's run so many races like this? Nobody. And if you ask her to talk about it, she won't, because she's so She's so quiet and she's, she's an amazing little person, you know. She's so strong. She's little, but she's so strong. She's probably one of the strongest people I've actually ever met. She's quiet, like, she's very light. But she's tough. I mean, you've got to beat around this. There's so much caring and love that goes into it, and I think that's part of the beauty of it. Our marathon team just puts out this tremendous effort, and there's so much love. That's one of the things that always strikes me in the race, how much love it brings forward. Everyone is different. Sri Chimoy was so unique because, you know, he could always used the term God's orchestra. We're working together. My supreme lords, sun power is mine. It does have a tremendous simplicity and at the same time it's profound and it's something that you really feel when you're there on the course, the power of it. <laughs>